I invite you to become still again. And I want you to take a moment to recall what Maeve has said to us and to gather the gems that you heard. It's different for each person. And I want you to store them in your heart. Lord Jesus, help us to see what you are saying to us through Maeve tonight as we pray for healing. And Lord, as we stood to applaud her, may we always appreciate the gift of the people around us. And forgive us the times when we haven't done so, but give us a real appreciation, a love, a joy in the gift of the people you have put around us. The people we bump into. The surprises of the Holy Spirit. And help us to listen to their story and to recognize you in their story. And the Lord, among the people you've given us is your mother. And it's interesting when St. Jerome was writing about that moment, he talks about St. John making a place for her. And Jesus, help us to make a place in our lives for your mother here this evening. Help us to open up. And Lord, as we appreciate Maeve and your mother, help us as a society to have reverence for humanity, for both men and women, for Lord, male and female, you made us with our various gifts, our differences and our complementarities, Lord. And help us, Lord, to have a profound reverence for all of us and the different brokenness that we experience and illnesses we experience in our lives. May we never dismiss one another. For whatever, Lord, we do to the least of these, our brothers and sisters, we have done to you. Jesus, heal my heart and the hearts of my brothers and sisters here this evening that we might be aware of the fact and do it with great joy that we might embrace the world with your love, conscious that whatever we do for our brothers and sisters, we do for you. What a lovely vocation you give us, Lord. What a lovely vocation you give us, Lord. Whatever we do, for the least of these, our brothers and sisters, we have done and we do and we will do for you Lord thank you Lord Jesus Christ in a moment um, we're going to move the monstrance carry the monstrance through the assembly here and bless you um, I want you to be open to tremendous healing uh, I want to talk about physical healing for a moment. I remember being in confession with a woman and when she arrived, her face was distorted. Um, she looked like she'd had a particularly bad stroke. That was not her actual story. She'd had a particularly brutal childhood. 
And she came and she made a very honest confession. She'd been abused as a child. She had got involved in abusing others. She was a tremendously angry person. And then she came to a healing and awareness of God. And then she came to make this confession in which she was no longer blaming other people, but she was actually reaching out to God for mercy and forgiveness. And I'll never forget it. When she'd finished her confession, her face straightened. Most remarkable thing I have ever seen. God heals people physically. And if you have some physical ailment here this evening, will you please ask him to heal you? Okay? We owe him that. He is love. Why would we not ask him to heal us? And if there's someone at home this evening who needs healing, will you please, when Jesus comes round in the monstrance, will you ask him, please, to heal your brothers and your sisters? Please ask him. And ask him with faith. And know that the Lord does heal, does physically heal people. He also heals us emotionally. That's very important. Because often we are haunted by fears and anxieties from the past. So I ask you to look to be healed emotionally. And there's someone in your family. I remember a lady coming to me. She was very upset about her son. She said, for some reason, I'm afraid. He seems to be very angry. It's like he's crippled. And sometimes that seething anger that can be in us or in someone we love, ask the Lord to heal that. I know the Lord is present here. I know, I know he loves you. And that's enough. The amazing thing is if one person here has faith tonight and asks for all. So just for a moment, I want you to reach out to the person alongside you and hold their hand. I want you to touch the hand of the person alongside you. And we'll pray this prayer together. Lord Jesus Christ, I acknowledge you are present in the Eucharist here this evening. We, as your people, ask you to move among us and to heal us, transform us physically, emotionally, psychologically, in spiritually. In every aspect of our being, Lord. Lord, enable us to live life to the full. We turn to you this evening. For you are the divine physician. And we entrust our case to you. Mary, I ask you as our mother... Hear our prayer for healing. And with urgency, go to your son, Jesus. As you pleaded so magnificently in Cana, bring about a miraculous and wonderful answer to my prayer. Bring about a miraculous and wonderful answer to our prayer. Lord Jesus, we place all our trust in you.
And I invite you to become aware of Jesus and the Eucharistic, his Eucharistic presence here. We adore you, Lord God, and we ask the music ministry to lead us in worship of Christ.
as the Lord Jesus moves through the hall I ask you to ask our lady to help increase your faith the she who first showed Jesus to the world on that first christmas night would help us open our hearts in expectant faith to the presence the wonderful presence of her son Jesus here this evening may we welcome him for he is the lord may we open to him for he stands at the door and he knocks let us open the door to him this evening lord we ask you to come in welcome jesus welcome lord do with us what you will for we know you are love we know you are love brought down on earth and you have left us your abiding presence in the eucharist lord and for this this evening we give you thanks and we thank you lord for the priesthood that you call men to share this grace to make your body and we thank you lord for the men and women who so freely respond to you this evening i lift up all my brothers and sisters to you this evening lord and i ask you to make them well in mind and body and soul let nothing of the work of sickness or hurt or pain prevent them from living the fullness of life jesus as you move among us we acknowledge that you are the lord you are indeed the holy one May your will be done in us. May your glory arise in us as the light of the sun rises in the morning. May your love dawn in us. And your love that is as certain as the dawn, Lord. May this healing love this healing light heal us here this evening lord may all that is dark within me dissolve and pass away may all that is dark within my brothers and sisters as the light of your love pours out upon us may shadows run and things of darkness flee Lord we ask you to make us one. Heal our divisions. Heal the divisions within the Christian family, Lord. The different people who are baptized and we call ourselves different names, Lord. We ask you in our time to bring healing to the your broken body, Lord, on earth. And we ask you, Lord, to heal divisions within our families our own domestic families lord we lift up to you all our families here tonight all the hurt and pain of the past that is holding us apart lord i ask you to heal this evening i ask you to reconcile brothers and sisters parents and children grandparents and grandchildren anywhere lord there is a division in a family 
Lord, I ask you to heal that division. That we may be one. Lord, unum sand. That we may be one, Lord. As you and the Father and the Holy Spirit are one. And Lord, forgive us hasty words. And help us, Lord, to put a guard on our lips. That we may be careful of what we say. Lest our words cause division and hurt in our family. Or indeed, Lord, in our church. Lord, bless our clergy. Bless the bishops of our land. Lord, they have a most difficult task at this time. Grant them, Lord, your wisdom. You have chosen for us pastors, Lord. Now fill them with your grace and spirit and power. Lord, in the book of Lamentations, you tell us that your blessings are new every day. Today, in this healing service, we claim the blessing, the anointing of this day. May your will be fruitful in us, Lord. May your love be fruitful in our bodies. May your love be fruitful in our families, our parishes, our communities, and in our land. Heal this land, O oh Lord, we pray. Give us a strong spirit of faith. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We bless you. I invite you to be seated. We're going to listen to a piece of scripture written by St. Paul on the nature, a reflection on the nature of his experience of the love of God and his experience of the reality of love. And as we look to healing tonight, we take God's word as our guideline for the future. One Corinthians thirteen. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude, it does not seek its own interests, it is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury, it does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, I Lord, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially, and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, 
the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. But when I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly, as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially, then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain, these three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. We look this evening at the banner behind and the words that are written on them. Can you read them for me? Jesus, I trust in you. And I want you to think about the future now. About the future of our land, but the future of your families. In what are you trusting? Where's your confidence? Where is your hope? And the real healing for Paul was when he came to know the Lord. And his whole life was transformed. And after that, you can read the long list of things, very uncomfortable things like shipwrecks and being jailed and being scourged and all of the things that happened to him. And it didn't matter because nothing mattered more than the experience of knowing our Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And I was going to say a good friend of mine, but uh, a saint that I love, Saint Jerome, said, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. Now, he wasn't trying to be insulting, but he was actually saying, if you read the scriptures, the scriptures are living and you will find if you open the scriptures and read them that you will enter into a living relationship with Jesus Christ. And your life will be changed. And you will never ever be the same again. Because you will be able to say in a very personal way, Jesus, I trust in you. And my mother used to say it a different way. She used to say, Sacred Heart of Jesus, I trust in you. And she used to say, and this was the way of the old people, as I call them now, that I'm an old person. <laughs> and it's lovely to be getting older. Um, they, they used to say, Welcome be the holy will of God. And I can remember my mother's surgeon. My mother died when I was young. And my mother's surgeon was very upset because she had just had a baby and he was just under a year. And she had been developing these aches and pains. And he had to tell her by the way, I wasn't that little baby. That's my little brother. My little brother. My little baby brother is 47. <laughs> so what does that make me? <laughs> but he had to tell her she was going to die, that she had terminal cancer, and there was really no hope. 
And he told her. And he was terrified telling her. And she looked at him. And she said, welcome be the holy will of God. And afterwards, talking about it, he said what really killed him emotionally when she said it was he knew she meant it. Welcome be the holy will of God. She knew we'd be all right. And we didn't turn out too bad. God's will is often strange in the beginning to us, but it's always wonderful. And there are people here tonight who are frightened of bad news. And it comes to all of us in the end. Because this world is not our destiny. Thanks be to God, it would be dreadful if it was. <laughs> We're bound for something more wonderful and more extraordinary. Amen. Union with God. Amen. That's our destiny. Amen. And so in the face of suffering and sadness and the heartbreak of losing people we love, we can say, Jesus, I trust in you. And we need to be able to say that and to mean it and to know that all will be well. So can we stand? And before all of the angels and saints in heaven, let us lift the roof by tonight three times proclaiming it together. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. And where would we be without Our Lady? Can we finish this healing service with singing Our Lady of Knock, please? Yes, and let us, like as if it's our national anthem, we proclaim her to be our queen. Children 